Normally, you wouldn't head to Golang for web scraping. You'd go to Python or to JavaScript, but Go is actually pretty good at scraping, even if it does lack behind Python, especially in the data world. There's some cool stuff going on. I, when I found Collie, I was very impressed how quickly and easily you could scrape HTML pages, but it was a lot more difficult when it came to JavaScript and rendering. Since I have found this pro this project here called Gezior, which I think looks really promising, it looks a lot more like Scrapey but written in Go. And the main thing that I'm finding the most interesting is that it's built in JavaScript rendering, which means it uses the Chrome DP Go package in the background to actually render those requests through Chrome directly. It does a lot of the stuff that Scrapey does. I think it's really cool. So what I wanna do in this video is look through the example and then maybe write something else a little bit more difficult, different so we can just see how it works together. So I have copied out the basic example and I have it in my main.go file here. Now I've imported in what I've needed, I've installed it. So we've got about 26 lines, 30 lines of code. Let's go ahead and run this and we'll do go run main.go. We can see it just zips through these pages and now I have an out.json file here which once I format with black, we'll see that we have some neat JSON. Now it has given me some extra com uh, trailing commas which strictly breaks JSON, but that can be uh, fixed, I'm sure. But you can see that how we can get things out like this. Now, just like in Scrapey, we have the option to do export.csv as well. So if I change this to, I believe, CSV, like this, nice and simple, we'll run it again, and we should then get the same output, but in a CSV file. So let's see, we do have output.csv here. So that's very well and good, but as you know, I don't particularly like the basic examples like this. I find them a little bit sort of uh, lackluster because you know this is not that impressive. So what I've got over here, which I'll show you when I'm going to my other project, is I have a slightly more, uh, slightly more expanded version, um, which basically goes out to Amazon and reaches out for the page for the product reviews based on the ASIN that we give it. So I've created this get product function, which basically runs a new uh, instance of Gezior, which then uses the g.get rendered function for its request. What that means is that all of the requests are gonna be filtered through a Chrome browser, which means we can have the rendered JavaScript, we have less chances of being blocking, being blocked. However, it is a little bit slower. What I have here then is a parsing function, which is very similar to Scrapey, and then exports here. Now this function here is the callback, so you could make this do anything with this information. I'm just choosing still to use the exports. You could, of course, put this into your own struct and pass it around your program as you needed to. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna remove this, comment this out for the moment, and we will run this version not with Python, we'll run it with Go. And we'll see that it is gonna be a bit slower. But we do get the output of the page that's coming across, which is something that I usually put into my logging anyway. And we'll see that it's gonna go through all of those pages. Just like Scrapey, it handles the next page by looking for that next page button to go to the next URL. So that's done. And if I come to the, I did it out, uh, JSON, I called it test.json we'll see that we do indeed have all of the reviews with the information that I selected. So there's the body of the review, the date and the title. Um, this is pretty cool. There's quite a lot of cool stuff going on here. So let's just go back to our main.go file. Now one thing that I do like to do is like to be able to connect to Chrome remotely because that just gives you so much more options. Rather than having your actual code spin up the Chrome instance, you can connect to a Chrome browser, which is already running, um, which makes your life a bit easier in some way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to a new uh, terminal and I'm gonna run this command, Chromium, uh, Chromium browser remote debugging on the port 922. This means this browser is now open here and we can connect to it using the 922 uh, on the local host 
port here. So this is where this browser endpoint comes in. So now I'm going to connect to this running browser. So let's quit out of this and we'll do go run again. If I come over here, we'll see that now it is controlling this specific browser that I've selected. And we can see all the information come through as it goes through and pulls up all of the information that I've asked it to. So although Python is better for web scraping in general and dealing with data, I think there's a lot of merit to the stuff that's going on in the other languages like this in Go and like Elixir as well, which is another one that I'm gonna be looking at. It's really interesting to see how different people in different languages approach building their web scraping frameworks and you can sort of start to see the similarities and understand how you can then maybe better build your own web scrapers using some of the things that you pick up. I think this is really cool and I'm gonna dig into this a little bit more. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, jump in the Discord. There's a link down below. Come and talk to me about it and come and tell me more about this if you know it. And also I've been doing a few more live streams recently, so make sure you join the Discord because you'll know when I go live for those. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.